Jill from June Taylor. We've all heard of paint by number. Now we have sew by number. This is called quilt as you go where the pattern is actually printed right on the batting. We start out by cutting around our printed batting and we're going to attach our backing fabric. And to do that we can either use quilt basting spray by spraying it on the batting or we can use our fabric glue stick. This goes on purple but it dries clear. We're going to cut all our pieces to the size that the direct tell us. We like to starch our fabrics first to get them nice and stiff. And then we're going to simply follow the directions. So put piece number one in the number one spot like this. Piece number two right sides together with piece number one on the placement line between one and two. And now you're going to stitch a quarter of an inch away from the edge. And we're going to continue on in the same manner. And we're done with our finished placemat. ready for some farm fresh fun with the Go Tractor Die. This 6x12 die board will work with any Go fabric cutter and is bursting with seven unique and complicated shapes that all fit together to build the tractor of your dreams. From the basic body of the tractor to the detailed wheels, these shapes would be difficult and time consuming to cut by hand, but they are easy to harvest using this die. You'll be building a farm full of these tractors in no time. Use them to embellish quilts, wall hangings, and more. The tractor is sized perfectly to work along the Go Camper, the Go Pickup, 
and of course the Go Farm animals. The Go Tractor is sure to cultivate your creativity because at AccuQuilt, we help you cut time so you can quilt more. Are you ready for some fun in your sewing space? Welcome to the world of Aero Sewing. Hydraulic chairs are a must for extreme comfort while sewing. Features include adjustable height, 360 degree swivel, perfect lumbar support, and a stable five star base. They even have a storage compartment in the seat. The Aero cutting and sewing cabinets open up to give you plenty of creative space plus handy storage solutions. These amazing cabinets come in three different finishes to complement any decor. Extension arms and multi-position hydraulic sewing lifts for free arm and flatbed sewing are just a few of their outstanding features. Cabinets provide storage along with extra space for cutting and pressing. No matter the project, Aero Sewing Furniture is perfect to help you sit, stand, cut, so surge and create. Happy sewing. Today is all about sewing our tangled star blocks for our quilt along. 
Stay tuned to see just how we do it. Hello, I'm Erica Botker, AccuQuilt's creativity expert. Miss Pam is off today. She's still working. She's at AQS Daytona for the rest of the week. So I'm gonna be hosting solo here with the help of the live stream team. Welcome to part two of our AQS and AccuQuilt Along. It's the first one for the new year. And today I'm gonna to be showing you how to sew together tangled star blocks for the Go Grapefruit Slice Throw Quilt. Plus, don't forget, we're gonna have live question and answer all throughout the show. Now the team's gonna send us questions and I've got my laptop right over here to keep an eye on it. And then I'm gonna be able to answer your comments. So be sure to ask any and all questions from the comment section wherever you're streaming our show. Now quilters, in case you missed it, we started with an introduction to this show the last Wednesday in January. And we went over kind of fabrics and, and some basics. And there was also a blog that day that included the ro traditional rotary cutting directions and AQS had a blog post as well. Now, last week, we went ahead and cut our blocks out. Now, we had some tips for organizing your pieces and some possible variations along the way. We record and have those shows available for you to watch at any time. So it's beneficial to watch at least last week's show before you get started on your Go Grapefruit Slice Throw Quilt. So be sure to check it out on AccuQuilt's video gallery, on our Facebook page, or on our YouTube channel. Okay, here is a sample of my block. I'm gonna hold it up for Mr. Greg. I am loving this block. So this is, I went a little rogue. I was the one going rogue. These are the colors that I'm using. So you can see the version behind me, when we go back to it, that's gonna be what the pattern looks like. This is what I'm using. So here's our sample, and we're gonna start sewing our units. Now, as complicated as this block looks, it's really four identical units just turned to go together. And I'm gonna show you just how to put it together. Now, don't forget, put your questions in the comment section so that I can answer them. So I'm all spread out today. I got all the things here. I've got my laptop, my sewing machine. I've got a little design board, my wall. I've got directions. I've got a cut and sew mat from June Taylor. And I've even got a brand new iron to try out along with my clappers, because I'm gonna be pressing. So let's get started. The first thing I did <laughs> was to print out not only the directions for the quilt behind us, which everybody's gonna need, whether you're using traditional rotary cutting or die cutting, but I also cut, I also printed out the block assembly directions. And these can be found on the product page on the website. And the reason I did that, and we can put it down like here, cause I've got two for overhead is because all the pieces are labeled on this diagram and the step-by-step. -step. So I've got both of these things up here just to make sure that I'm keeping on track. And I've also taken a little design board. I don't know about you all, I use, I, I once upon a time, you can tell, I cleaned it up for you, special. but. I took a piece of foam core that I got at the dollar store and I cut it up into squares and covered it with some batting scraps. And I will use this to lay out units because they stick to it. Cause it's, you know how batting, it's gonna stick to it. So that's gonna keep my places in shape. I've got my half units here laid out for us too. So you can see what we're gonna be building as complex as this block looks, it's really four identical units, and we put these pieces together into basically half square triangle units, sew them together to make that unit. So we're gonna start with our eight, no, our H 
and our ER pieces right here. They're the side pieces, they're up here, and we're gonna sew those together. Now, I don't know about you, but I prefer to chain piece. So what I've done for this show is to stack up four of each piece on my design board so that I can just sew all of my uh, ER and H pieces together and then press those seams open. Before I get started though, I'm gonna check for questions. Let's see. Oh, I don't have any. Uh, Brock, do you see anything? Okay. All right, well great, we can get started. Okay, so here these are. Now the beauty of this die is the specialized dog ears. And when I put these together, look how well, can you see it? These are lining up so perfectly. So I'm gonna take this, all these to the sewing machine, slide, slide over to this position with me, and we're gonna sew these together. Except this piece, there we go. Okay, so while I'm sewing these together, be sure to get those questions in. If you don't have questions, you can make comments on the projects here. Oh, question, is there a trick to sewing C to AR? I seem to be having a problem. We, when we get there, we'll take a look at that. That's good to know. And did you use batting on the design board? I did, I used a scrap of batting and I was really, um, this is down and dirty. It is hot glue and I just stretched it around. I just stretched it around a cheap piece of foam core. So it is not a thing of beauty. I have seen lovely design boards made by some people. You can even buy them pre-made. I just decided I needed them one day and like I said, did a real down and dirty version. Chain piece. Who's got snacks? We found leftover Valentine candy here in the Dream Studio and I've got two dark chocolate dove hearts over here by me just in case of emergency. Okay, so those are my H and ERs. And if you remember from last week when we did this, we had to cut all of our pieces with the right side up, with the fabric right side up. Do you remember that? It's important. All right, let's slide over here. And I'm gonna press a little bit. How do you like our fancy new iron? We're so excited. Okay, and what I'm gonna do is press these out and then I'm gonna stick them underneath my clapper over here. Um, I don't know if you know this, but we sell our clappers with our AccuQuill name and logo on them and they're made here locally in our area by a very nice gentleman and they are really helpful in flattening out those seams. I love using them. So we've got two sizes available. This is the eight inch. There's also a 12 inch available, which I happen to have on the set as well. I have the 12 inch at home. But the eight inch is really good when you're doing your units too. And I have also found that I love them so much, I kind of wish I had more than one at home. So, you know, buy one of each. Okay. So we've got those sewn together. Now we're gonna be ready to go on to our next, our next unit. So I'm gonna put these back on my little design board. And the next pieces we're gonna sew together are gonna be A and B. And those are right down here. So I'm gonna be sewing these. Now, these are a little tricky. Be sure you're lining them up correctly. And you'll know it because our friends, the dog ears are gonna line up perfectly. If you go to sew this and they're not lining up perfectly, that means you probably have your shape um, A the wrong direction. 
And A and AR are different pieces, so be sure you keep track of that. Really, the only hard part about doing this block is gonna be keeping your pieces straight. And if you've got your pieces well organized and can sew a quarter inch seam, you are gonna do great. Um, Pam and I have been seeing so many of you making test blocks, which we love, because we always recommend that. And they've just been turning out beautifully. You guys have been doing great. Some of you are uh, even uh, working way ahead. I'm gonna finish pressing these two, sewing these two together, wait. Oh, I almost did that wrong. You know, with grunge, it looks very similar on the right and the wrong side of the fabric. Now I've got those, we're gonna clip those apart. I have a little doohickey um, I've been testing out that one of our quilters sent me to try out that um, stands there and you cut your chain piecing apart. It's really slick. Let's see, what kind of iron? Oh, well, this actually, since I'm coming over this way anyway, I'll answer this question. This is an Oliso. It's all, oh, does it say on the side? O-L-I-S-O, -O. and this is the special edition, oh, there we go, there you can see it for the glare. Um, this is the special edition Tula Pink iron, and Pam and I thought that we needed this to really brighten up the studio. Isn't it pretty? Got this on one of our recent uh, expeditions. Thanks to Cali Quilts out in Sacramento. They're one of our great retailers. I have the, I have actually, this is like a new model for them and I have their original model as well. This one's fun. It has a headlight. Look at that, can you see? Isn't that fun? But it's also adorable. Okay, so that was the iron question. Now let's go over here and see what other questions we've got. Oh, how to use directional fabric. Wow. Uh, Debbie, no, we're not selling this one, at least not yet. We may be. Should we sell this iron? It's pretty cute. Let us know. Put that in the comments for us. Let's see. Directional fabric, wow, that might be a little tough with this, although having said that, I, let's see. Having said that, I did do a sample block with a tiny check and I just did it and it turned out fine. Um, let's take a look at our die. You know, I'm, I think with a directional fabric, you're gonna wanna do a little bit of to do this with, either use, get extra of what you're using or use a directional fabric that's got a similar size and scale and direction to it to, to figure out how you want to lay those pieces. Now the good news is, is that since you're, you're cutting everything right side up, you're already probably gonna have fairly good results, but Gosh, I haven't tried directional. I may have to do that. Okay, I'm just gonna lay our die right here in case we need it for anything else. All right, I am pressing these seams open. Somebody had asked about that again. I'm gonna press almost all of my seams open on this. Okay, so I've now pressed, sewn this, and this was the A, the A and the B unit and we're gonna be sewing it on to D right now. So again, if you've got your pieces all laid out, and I organize mine in Ziploc bags this time, you know, it, it's, all, it's all a matter of taste. Pam put her units together, like she put the A's and B's in a Ziploc together, and then she put the, the D's in with them, and she put these two in a Ziploc. It's all whatever works for you, but I thought that was pretty clever. I put them in individual bags and it was a lot of bags. Okay, now I'm gonna sew these together 
And again, we're seeing our dog ears just line up perfectly. This is a really great dye, quilters. Might even be. We have a question, Brock? Um, well, size, scape, size, scale. So this is just a little board. This is just a little board that I'm using and I keep it handy. A design wall typically is bigger and usually on a wall so that you can lay out like your quilt. So you can, this is like for units and blocks and a design wall is gonna be for your quilt. So it's all about the size. Now you can have boards that are bigger than this, but to me, that's how I would define the two. Does that make sense? What else have we got here? Do I press seams open? Yes, I am pressing seams open at this point. It just is gonna help with our bulk. Okay. Okay, I've got two more to sew on this. And if I was doing this at home, I might just do all my, you know, kind of jump around on my units and press more together, but I want to do them in order because it really does make a difference when you go to putting them together. Once you do a couple, if you want to sew them out of order, go for it. But I would sew one or two, um, all, the, all the units, all the pieces together. I think it's just a little bit more efficient and it's gonna keep you on track a little bit better. Okay, so we've got those together apart. Let's see, are there any coloring pages for this block? By golly, there are. So if you go to the product page for the Go Tangled Star at AccuQuilt.com, no matter how you're cutting your pattern, your, um, your blocks, this, um, document, the block assembly, and there's like a green button you click on. And it's going to give you this sheet that has the assembly, it's got the step-by-step, -step, and then the last page is going to have that coloring sheet that everybody loves right there for you. This is really helpful, especially with this one, to keep track of your pieces and where you want your colors to be, I think. So I'm going to focus on pressing. And Brock, do we have any questions I've missed? Okay. Brock will keep me on task, don't worry. So if you're gonna be in Daytona Beach or going to AQS Daytona, um, AccuQuilt is sponsoring the lounge and that's where you'll find Miss Pam. She's gonna be helping People experience the go hands-on by cutting and sewing blocks together. So be sure you stop by there. And we've got a great retailer there representing us who will be selling our products, and that's Cut Up and Sew. So you'll want to be sure and stop by their booth as well. Meanwhile, Raleigh, North Carolina is the site of QuiltCon. Now, if you're not familiar, QuiltCon is the world's largest modern quilting event. And it is being held February 22nd through 25th also. And we have a retail partner there. Loving Stitches will have our product there. You'll spot Lynn Gibney possibly walking around the show. And my good friend Tammy from here who is our uh, B2B manager. You'll also see some of our great designers there. So if you go back and check out the blog on January 29th, you'll see the schedule for when you can go see Chris Martini, Marti Marcini, Marchini, I knew I'd get it. You'll also see Carolina Moore, she's one of our favorite people, and our two newest designers who we introduced yesterday on yesterday's show with their four new dyes. 
And that's Janine Tur uh, LaCour and Tiffany Turner from Tip Stitch. Okay, so I've got these pieces together and look, these two, I'm gonna sew these two sections together. That's gonna be half of my block and then I'm ready to move on to the other half of the block. So this is a great time to ask me questions. Seems to be a lot of fabric waste with this dye. I don't, I did not notice that because if you follow your sub cutting directions in the pattern or the packaging, that is really going to help you avoid that. Now, there were some chunks that gave up some nice, some pieces. I did have some nice scraps and those are good to put into your your scrappy pile, but for the most part, it's 100% worth it to me because like I said, these dog ears are so perfect. I just love how they're growing together. And it makes this complicated block so easy to put together. All right. Off of here. Who will be at Branson? You know, I do not know if we will have a presence at Branson. I have three. Oh, I knew I was missing somebody. I'm not sure who will be at Branson or if we will have a presence at Branson. Um, so stay tuned for that. All right, what snacks are you having? If you don't have questions, send me the snacks you're having. Here's another question, dark or milk chocolate? Now I discovered something, Greg on our team found those dark uh, dove hearts and that made him happy. He's clearly a dark chocolate boy. I like both. I don't know about the other two. Mr. Kenyon, are you dark or milk chocolate? Milk chocolate. Milk chocolate. Mr. Brock? Milk chocolate, all the way. milk chocolate all the way. Okay, well, there we go. People have very um, set ideas, I've discovered over the years, about the milk versus dark chocolate. Okay, again, I am going to press this seam open. I'm just pressing them all open. It's going to spread out the bulk that we've got going on. Okay, I'm just gonna place that on there. So think of your questions. If you haven't already, be sure you join the AQS Quilting Project Parade Face Group page. It is such a great community. Everybody's working on their projects together. I've seen so many great pictures of people's projects. Be sure you use the hashtag AQBuilt on there as well so that we can find it. And that's also how we find pictures that we use for our show and tell that will be the last week, the last show for this quilt along. I'm using my new iron, I'm loving it. Oh, I hear candy wrappers. If you give a mouse a cookie, right? All right. Are you seam open or seam to the dark side pressers? If I have a choice, I'll press to a side, unless I'm doing some, but small things, things that are gonna have a whole lot of seams or bulk, possible bulk, that's when I will go to pressing open. Lynn on our team, she's just gonna press everything open. Okay. So we're back to our little design board here and you can see we've got those four half units finished. I'm gonna start up here and we're gonna be starting on this one with, we're gonna sew, we've got two sets. I'm gonna go ahead and sew the, this is ER and H 
And then down here, we've got C and A, R. And I think that this was the question that somebody had. So we're finally going to get to that. So let's start at the top and work our way down. And again, if you go to line up your pieces and they're not lining up with those dog ears, double check your placement, double check the pattern and your block assembly directions. You can find those block assembly directions on the packaging as well. You know, Pam and I talk about that sometimes, but there is a wealth of information on that packaging. Now you can find it other places as well, but oh, I needed a leader. Ugh, pill sticks. Okay, do you ever do that? I tend not to use a leader, um, leaders and enders always, especially when I'm doing the shows, but it's important. So before somebody asks, that means that you would start with, have something else here. Um, and if you're an efficient, you know, if you're not as efficient, oh, it came unthreaded, no, we're good. If you're not as efficient, you can just have a scrap piece of fabric and just kind of run it through a little bit at the end so that it's there to be the leader. So it's an ender there and it's a leader when you start your next one. You just leave it on the machine there to help you get started with your next piecing. And that helps you uh, stay out of the ditch, if you will. <laughs> that middle in your throat plate. Now another way to avoid that is they do make different throat plates for some machines that will have just a single tiny hole for your needle to go straight up and down with. So that's another option. And this one doesn't have that on it. The problem is, here's the downside of that. If all you ever do is straight stitching, you're going to be fine. But if you go to use a decorative stitch and you forget to change that throat plate, you are going to break a needle and you don't want to do damage to your machine. So that's the downside of that. That's why leaders and enders are good. Okay, here's our next piece. And this is the one we had questions on. This is the, which one is which? C and AR. Now, she was having trouble with this. It may be that she wasn't laying them out in the right direction because if you lay them out correctly, they're going to fit together like this, just perfectly. But if I turned this and laid it out, it still looks like it's going to fit almost, but it's a hair off and it's not going to go together the right way for the block. So just keep that in mind. Be sure you lay those out. That's probably what's happening for you. Okay. Now I've, now I've got double checking myself. Okay. Okay, now we're good. I'm gonna go ahead and get these done. Oh dear. I can't see questions. Hold please. Okay, do I use a quarter inch seam or a scant quarter inch seam? Uh, I, with AccuQuilt dies, I use a true quarter inch seam. Quarter inch seams are something that quilters, I'm gonna tell you, are, can be the, 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 the perfect quarter inch seam is what we all want in life, right? I always use a quarter inch foot. All quarter inch feet are not created equal. You want to always, always, always check your quarter inch seam allowance when you're sewing. Even if you, were, if you are using a different machine, like if you're going from machine to machine, be sure you double check that. If you are using different quarter inch feet, be sure you check that. If you are using a different thread, whatever it is, when you start a new project, check your seam allowance just a best practice. Keep a little seam guide close. I think we have one on the website you can pick up. They're super cheap and they're really handy. Every once in a while you'll be reading a pattern, not one of ours, just a, another quilting pattern, and they may tell you to do a scant 
quarter inch. And if you're not familiar with that term, it means you're gonna be a couple, a thread or two short of a true quarter inch seam. Now, we can do some pressing. Let me check for questions while I'm there. When pressing open, best to use a shorter stitch length so there's no gap. I don't change my stitch length. Uh, I just kind of leave it the way it is. Um, we've got a couple other questions here. So the first is, is that a pink dot on the sole plate of my iron? And yes, it is, but it's actually Tula Pink's logo. So it's not really a dot, it's her little logo. You can kind of see it there. Somebody asked if we were going to be at the Mid-Atlantic show, and I do not know if we have a retailer. I would guess we will probably have a retailer uh, representing us at that show. Somebody else asked about coming to visit us here in Omaha, and if they could come here and visit us. And unfortunately, the answer is we, well, first off, we'd love to have you come to Omaha, but our facility is not open for visitors currently. We closed our facility down to visitors during COVID. We haven't reopened it because we are a remote workplace. So when last year here, when we're busy doing a show, uh, we aren't here. So, and the warehouse team has their hands full getting all of your orders out the door, so they are not able to give tours. Uh, we do not have our gallery uh, display going that we once had anymore either. So unfortunately, no. Now, if you are here in town and you want to pick up some AccuQuilt product, we do have a great retailer who's only a couple miles from the office called Celtic Quilter. And you can certainly run up there and see Judy and her team. She actually used to work for AccuQuilt. And they'll be more than happy to help you. And they know all about our product. But no, we do not do tours of our facility any longer. However, if you're in the area, it is totally worth your while to go to Lincoln to tour the International Quilt Museum. It is the largest privately, uh, largest collection of quilts in the world. And it is amazing and it is well worth the trip. It's on the east campus of the University of Nebraska. And then after you're done, you can slide down the street and get some really good ice cream that the Ag School produces. Brock, do we have questions while I'm pressing away over here that you can see? I, some people may use a shorter stitch. I don't ever change my stitch length. Um, I go with my standard setting, and you're going to ask me what that is, too, and darn it, I don't know off the top of my head. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't change mine, and I don't notice a gap. You're not going to, but check it and see. I mean, the, the, best, the best advice I can give you is to always check and do a test block and see. If you've got a looser woven fabric, you might want to do that. But with standard quilting fabric, I don't know that it's, it's essential. OK, I'm turning all my pieces. OK. She loves her what? She loves her watch. Oh, thank you very much. I love that. Um, Pam is at AQS Daytona right now. So she left right after yesterday's show to, for the airport to get on a plane and go to Daytona. So AccuQuilt is sponsoring the lounge there, and that's where you'll find Miss Pam. If you're going to be there, she'd love to help you cut and sew a block. I'm going to blow my nose in just a minute. Our weather has turned unusually warm, and my allergies seem to think that perhaps it's spring. Now, you and I both know it isn't yet, but my nose doesn't seem to have gotten the message. Okay, now I've got my ER and my H. 
I've got my A, my C and my AR together, and I hope I answered the question for our quilter who was having trouble with that. I think you just needed to turn your piece. And now I'm ready to put these two units together, and I'm going to be sewing the G piece. Ta -da -da. We're going to line that up, and now I can get over to where I can see. Um, Quotes of Valor, I don't know if we will have, I, I need to check with Pam on that. I don't know if we're gonna have a new Quilts of Valor block this year or not. I would almost say yes, but I don't, I haven't heard anything about it and I haven't seen it yet. So I don't know an answer for that. Let's see. Pressing open. Anybody miss Brock besides me? Oh, Brock, your fan club misses you. He's always here. It's just that he's got so many, he's wearing a lot of hats behind the camera right now. So you don't always get to see him, but he's always here. Oh, that's true. Did you know we have a little Brock? We have Brock, we have Brock, and we have little Brock. Little Brock's over on the shelves. So there's always a little Brock around. We also have a sign outside our door that says Brock is in charge. Welcome to the Dream Studio, Brock is in charge. Okay. I'll focus here. Go ahead, send Brock all your accolades. Pam's dad misses him too. Oh, did we ever find out how many quilts of valor blocks were sent in last year? I never got, a, I never saw a final total, but I will reach out and maybe Courtney, who does our social media, maybe she can find that out and put that in a post for us. That would be great. Hey, do you guys follow us on social media? You really should, you never know what you're gonna find. All kinds of fun stuff. All right, I'm gonna snip these apart and press these. And again, I'm just gonna continue pressing open. I could press these to one side, but once I start pressing open, I'm just gonna keep going with that. And see, oh, a member of the Brock fan club. I may need a shirt from the new doll clothes line. Oh, that's it. We have a new, we have, okay, now's a good time I'm pressing. We had four new dyes launch yesterday, and I don't know if you saw the show or not, but two of those are designed by Tip Stitch. That's Tiffany Turner, and she does all of her own. She designs and sews her own clothes. And she designed for us a go paper doll die and paper doll clothes. So now we can make little paper doll clothes shirts that say Brock's Fan Club. Wow, that's pretty exciting. We also had two other dies that launched yesterday and those were designed by Janine LaCour. And one of those is the go lemon, super fun. And the other one is the Go Mushroom Medley. And our initial quantity of all of those was pretty limited, but we are completely sold out of the mushroom, all, mushroom medley already. Super fun dies, lots of possibilities. They're all applique dies, but this is National Embroidery Month. So there you go. Speaking of National Embroidery Month, that means that all of our downloadable for purchase, embroidery designs are 15% off this month. So if you've been thinking you wanted to do some machine embroidery, try it out. This is a great time to go ahead and get those on order. Download those and get started with them. Okay, I'm pressing my last piece here, then I'm gonna be able to sew the two parts of this unit together, sew our units together. And I promise you, it's gonna keep going together just as well as it has been so far. 
All right, so this top unit, and again, I'm just gonna, I'm just lining them up to keep myself on task because sometimes when I am, um, this may be a shock to you, but when I am sewing and talking at the same time, I could get confused. We are still in walk because we still have our dog ears lining us up and keeping us on task just perfectly. Let me get down here. Let's see. Oh, Sandy was at Kelly Quilts when Pam and I were there. Oh, good. She started using her go. But she bought, she bought a Go Big and a Tangled Star Block. Sandy, way to go. I hope it's working out well for you. Um, that was so fun at Cali Quilts. Besides that, it was a lot warmer there than it was here. And, oh, Nancy, Nancy's got a great idea. Did you see that, Brock? She's saying that we need a, we need to have an event called Brock Around the Block. I like that. We gotta work on that. Hmm, hmm. What could we come up with for that? What could we do for that? Should we have Brock designing quilt box? He's behind the camera so he can't fuss at me too much right now. What else could we do? We could have a mystery quilt with Brock. We could have Brock bring you a mystery quilt. Oh, I'm coming up with all kinds of ideas. The team hates it when I get like this. Let's see. Okay. Last one. I'm going to give it a press, and then we can put these units together, put our block together. And you only need nine blocks for this. Because they're set on point, and we're using those setting squares that we're gonna cut next week. It really, you get that, it's, it goes together really quick. And I know some of you speedy quilters out there have been sewing along. We've got people making, working on their second one already. We've got people doing table runners or different designs that they like. That's really the joy of doing this is that everybody's making it their own and having so much fun with it. And we get the fun then of seeing what you all are doing. So I'm gonna continue by pressing this open. Again, I could press them to the side, but I don't want to. I've seen such great color combinations that people are pulling out. And we talked last time about uh, fabric, scale of fabric and print fabric because Pam and I both chose to do uh, Moda Grunge by Basic Gray, um, which has kind of a, oh, it's kind of a blender basically, but it's, it's got a little bit of movement in the back of it, but basically kind of like a solid. So yes, you absolutely, we've seen some great pictures of people doing prints. Keep in mind the scale of your print. And maybe you want to take a print and have your biggest set of star points in that print and then back it up with some quieter fabric. And it's okay if your blocks are a little bit, um, I don't wanna say noisy, but uh, this particular design is going to give us those setting squares and setting triangles to give your eye a place to rest. So you've really got um, some, some territory to work with there. Okay, now, here we go. Okay, I'm gonna line them all up right so I get them in place right. But basically, you can see we've just created half square triangle units, right? We're gonna sew these together now. They're gonna go together. And I'm gonna say, okay, let's put this down here so we can get a good look at it. You want to make sure you're lining up this seam at the top. 
I'm going to sew these from the center out because this to me is the most important part. And I happen to have some of my wonder pins handy. I love these because they're so flexible and narrow. Okay, I'm going to line this up. I'm going to put a pin just to get me started and make sure I keep that together. Now as you go down the line, don't worry about so much about your other seams. Why is that? This seam, because it's going to cross by, they cross, right? But they're going to meet up at that quarter inch seam allowance, trust me. And then the next one you might want to give a pin to is going to be down here. This is going to be between your A and your AR. And sometimes we forget, but we want to make sure we finish strong and don't get wonky on the tip. So let's get started on that first one. And yes, once I get started on this, I am going to pull that pin out of there. I promise. Now, the other thing I'm going to do on this, you're going to see me backstitch. I backstitch on the center. I didn't really need to do that. It was just kind of a habit. But I am going to backstitch down on this corner because why? Well, that's going to be the corner of our block. And nothing annoys me more than going to put my blocks together and having them start to unsew themselves. I hate that. So I'm going to do the same thing with the rest of these units now, quilters. So this is a good time to ask me a question. Um, does the iron have auto shut off? Yes, this is the this is Aliso's new model, and it does have an auto shut off. My their older their original model or their earlier model, which was maybe the two, did not have an auto shut off. I have one of those, and I have one of these now. And this one does have the auto shut off. It also stands up. And the other thing that it does very nicely is um, that little headlight, which you would think you would need. But I recently got a new vacuum that has a headlight on it. It's a little horrifying, but very helpful at the same time. I see Riley Dog for all kinds of places that I didn't realize was there before. How are we coming, guys? Do we have questions? Oh! All right. Pin this one together. And again, every time I do it, I'm making sure I get those that center seam. And go ahead and stop and start. All right. Even Pam wrote into the uh, will tell you that a pin or two on this project is a good idea. You can also just kind of line it up as you go if you want. But that first pin, I think it's helpful. Then again, you know I love my pins. Now of course you can choose to follow the colors in the pattern. Uh, and Miss Pam is actually doing that this time. Or you can go a little rogue like I did this time and go with something different. And again, we've seen such great combinations from everybody on that AQS AccuQuilt Facebook page. Really fun. Be sure you're following along there. Be sure you're posting your pictures because we want to see those as well. <laughs> Okay, I sewed over a pin. Forgive me. Oh. 
Okay, coming up here. All right. Moment of truth. So here is our quarter block right here. We're matched up here, we're matched here, we're matched here. I, it just goes together so much easier than you think it's going to when you look at that block, for sure. Now we're gonna go ahead and press these and I'm gonna press these open as well. I'm just gonna keep up with a good thing. And let me check for messages. Okay, uh, this is the, uh, the, I think this is, this is the little version. I don't know enough about this iron to tell you its technical name, other than to tell you that there are two, um, there are two different Tula Pinks. There's the little one and the big one, and this is the little one. And I'm pressing today on my June Taylor uh, Cut and Press 2. And it actually has like a cutting mat on the other side of it. So it's great for taking along with you if you're going to be going to sew someplace else, if you're going to a retreat or something. It's fantastic for that. Okay. All right. And I always set my seam. I try to remember to set my seams. I don't always remember. But by that I mean just hit it with my hot iron and then before I press them open or to the side, either way. And I'm getting this down. Okay. Brock, what's going on? Anybody have snacks to share or questions for me? Good question. Um, it will be in April. So the next, I will, we will be introducing the next quilt along, I believe the last Wednesday in March. So you're not gonna have to wait very long. How's that? It is gonna be coming up soon. I noticed that the other day and thought, oh, I better start working. Um, Dirty little secret, I gotta work ahead on those things <laughs> a little bit so that I can write blogs and have everything ready for you and get all the information to our partners at AQS and they're busy with shows right now. There's, it is a lot going on in the quilting world, isn't there? Okay. Sewing this one out. I'm gonna do a quiz one of these days. I'm gonna ask the team questions. I'm going to quiz them. Oh, they were listening to me. Okay. All right. I need to put these together. Look at that. Same unit, same exact unit. We've got them all laid out. Perfect. Okay, I'm gonna sew these two together. And again, make sure, here's, your, here's your, your key point. We're gonna make sure that we've got this tip together. We're gonna come down and I'm gonna make sure I've got my A and AR point together. And in between, it's gonna take care of itself. Let's see. A hint for the next one. Well, goodness, a hint. I don't know. This is a little early. Uh, no hints. Brock, uh, Brock has spoken. Brock has spoken. There will be no hints. I'm very sorry, quilters. He says no. Who am I? 
Who am I to argue with Brock, the great and terrible? No, that's Oz. He's not terrible at all. He's a <laughs> Pay no attention to the man behind the curtain, as they say in The Wizard of Oz. Okay, and again, I would suggest going ahead and pressing or double stitching on that outer edge. It's just a good practice. And if by chance, I know I just sewed over my pin, but these are nice and thin, so it's not as big a crisis. Um, if by chance, this would fall into your UFO pile, you don't wanna do that. You wanna get it done right away, right? but you don't want things unraveling. Oh. You do want things to sew into the seam, however, so. Okay, let's see. I should ask the team in here what color they would make their blocks. Brock would go with shades of, let's see, he'd do black, gray, and red, probably. Could happen. Uh, let's see, oh, there, there, look. Isn't that so pretty? But look how well, everything continues to line up. Just a couple of pins, you're so good on that. And this last seam, I am gonna go opposite direction so I can nest for my center point. I just double check to make sure. And then we're gonna be done. So, since we're gonna be done pretty soon, ask your questions. I can't give you a hint yet, but once we finish this quilt along, then we'll start giving you some hints on the next one. How about this? The next quilt along will not use the Go Tangled Star Die. There, I gave you a hint. And Brock nodded his head. It's okay, I can give that hint. And I, since I already have my fabric for that one, I can tell you that I do have prints for that one. I'm really not giving you anything that you can tell from. Okay, now all I'm gonna have to do is put this together. I'm gonna put a couple pins in it real quick. We're gonna have this block done. You could totally have gotten more than one block done in this time if you weren't sitting and talking like I have been. It goes together super quick, and I think a lot of you found that out already. I'm gonna go ahead and pin as I go I'm again nesting. I went ahead and pressed opposite directions with the center so I could nest that center together. Just want that really good center point. Yes, these are the wonder pins. We do have these on our site and I really like them. They're nice and long, they're flexible, they're very sharp and they're very thin. I really like using them. Last seam together here. Take it for a spin. So, quilters, are you all ready now to just whip out all the rest of your box? Get started on your box? And yes, there is a lot of bulk in the center seam. There's no way of avoiding it. Pressing everything open except for that last um, one to either side to nest your seams is gonna help. I'm gonna use my scissors like it was a stiletto to make sure I get my seam laying down. Back stitch and I'm done. So we'll cut this off. 
we'll lay it out. Ta-da! There we go. So there is our block. And yes, once I press that out, we'll have our nice center seam, I promise. And I've got my block. So as we talked about, we wanted you to be sure and share your blocks on that AQS Quilting Project Parade Facebook group. During the quilt along, Pam and I, especially me, since she's got her hands full at the quilt show right now, will be commenting on your box and answering questions. Be sure you use hashtag AQBuilt. I want to also encourage you to check out the AccuQuilt blog every Wednesday during the quilt along. It'll go over the details from the day's show. So be sure you check that out. AQS will be updating their original blog. So if you're looking for a separate blog on AQS, you, what you wanna do is go back to their introduction blog and they're just gonna continue adding to it. So you can check that out as well. All right, quilters, before we end part two of this quilt along with the grapefruit slice throw quilt, we wanna announce the winner of today's giveaway. The lucky winner of, get this, $100 in AccuQuilt reward points is, drum roll please. It's Angela C. She's from Hallsboro, North Carolina. Congratulations. I don't know if that's close to where QuiltCon is going on or not. But if it is, I hope you go. And be sure to look for our, our booth there. Now, don't forget, we've got plenty of special offers available for you on our website, including that 15% off the embroidery products for National Embroidery Month. To get your order in, open a new tab in your browser, type in accuquilt.com party to see the current deals and place your order. Before we go, I wanna let you know that our die to try for this month is the Go Tractor die. I threw, I, uh, I threw my friend uh, Greg off over here. So here's our tractor die. We are almost out of our Go Tractor die. Now, if you're familiar with our, our die to try program, we release a limited number of a new die on the first Tuesday of every month. This month, it's the Go Tractor, and we are almost sold out. Now, you can only get this from us or from your local AccuQuilt retailer. So once we're out, we're out. So it is time for us now to go and get ready for our next show. We hope that today's show was just what you needed to inspire you to keep working on your Go Grapefruit Slice Throw Quilt, and we'll see you next time. Thanks so much for watching. To learn more about your quilting craft, be sure to follow us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel for live events every Tuesday and Wednesday. You can check out the events page on the AccuQuilt website for more details on upcoming shows. And if you're looking for even more inspiration, visit our blog for exclusive tutorials filled with tips and tricks. And remember at AccuQuilt, we help you cut time so you can quilt more. Join us every Tuesday at 12 noon Central Time for launch parties and trunk shows. These events are filled with tips, tricks, and inspiration. Next time, we'll be all about embroidery. You'll want to tune in and see if you've won a door prize that we'll give away during the show. And be sure to join us here every Wednesday at 12 noon Central Time for AccuQuote Live. There's always a lot of fun to be had. Next time, Pam will be back, and we're going to be sewing our rows together after we cut some setting squares and triangles. We hope to see you there.